Suddenly she had vanished and now nothing was the same. Having them missing is the torture. Having a missing sister, daughter, I mean, that's torture. You don't know what's happening to your family member. Lauren Giddings, a smart young law student, disappears in Macon County, Georgia. After four days of friends searching and unbearable torment, her desperate family calls police again. And when they came back the second time, what happened? They went in and searched around. The friends had already done that too, including Stephen McDaniel. They had gone in her apartment, searched around. The person on 911 had told them to go in again, um, check things like towels, like are her towels wet? Because then you know she showered recently. Check trash, can you check for receipts? And the police came too and checked around. And then everyone left, like maybe one or two in the morning. It was kind of like there was nothing to be seen there. Because it wasn't in Lauren's apartment where the horrifying story details would unfold, this missing person case became something far more sinister when investigators moved outside the building. They started looking a little closer around outside and discovered the, the trash bag that was in one of the dumpsters. And once they uh, were able to open the bag and look in it, discovered her, her body. Uh, we found uh, just her torso. Um, there was uh, no, no limbs attached, and uh, of course her, her head was missing as well, so we just had a torso. The devastatingly tragic news traveled fast to Lauren's family in Maryland, broken to them in a most unexpected way. We were just all there, and my uncle walked over, he lives across the street, and was kind of standing in the corner, and he said, well, have, did you check the news? And we're like, no, and what, what is it, you know, what is it, what did you check? And my aunt was like, you need to just tell us what you're talking about. And he said they found a body. And everyone was just hysterical. And then really quickly, like, well, who found it? Where? What? Why? Heart-wrenching news for the Giddings family. Sadly, the search for Lauren was over. Never did I doubt that that was her body, but that was my mom's first, you know. Is, are you sure it's her? Like, could it be, you know? They came here and did a DNA test on my mom to match her. But who had callously dumped Lauren's dismembered body in the trash? Police were desperate to solve this extremely brutal crime. This all happened so quickly. Yeah, it was, which honestly is a very good thing. When they found her body, the trash was supposed to have already picked it up at that point. The crime scene yields two lucky breaks for investigators. One, the dumpster should have been collected that morning, but the truck was running late leaving Lauren's remains and other DNA evidence to be discovered by police. And soon, there was this. Do you know anybody that, any enemies she might have had, somebody that might want to hurt her? No, I mean, we're, we don't know where she is, I mean. Stephen McDaniel's bizarre performance in an interview with our affiliate station, WGXA. His reaction on hearing the discovery of Lauren's body immediately captured the attention of investigators who found it strikingly suspicious. What about um, in the like the parking lot area? I know they've been doing a lot of, I think that's where they have recovered the body or whatever they recovered from there. Body? Um, had you heard, any, had you seen anything there? Had you seen anything there? I I mean, we don't know if this is the same person. You know what I mean? Like, they took out a body there earlier. We don't know if it's the same person or not. So that's how we're trying to ask people if they know who lived there. Are you okay, sir? I think I need to sit down. Okay. And McDaniel's performance didn't end there. He told reporters he'd wish he had lent Lauren one of his guns to protect herself. Yeah, I just heard something. Maybe I could have helped. Within hours, cops start looking a whole lot closer at McDaniel, a 25-year-old law graduate described by friends as quirky but intelligent. Investigators learned that friends considered him a bit creepy, saying he had an obsession with zombies. He had often asked others how to commit the perfect murder. His deception knew no bounds. Remember him, distraught and frantically searching for his missing friend, Lauren? He knew she wasn't gonna be found. I mean, alive. The hard evidence quickly came rolling in. He had in his possession both the master key and a key to her apartment. He had a flash drive that belonged to her that contained hundreds of her personal photos. 
His computer history showed an interest in her Facebook and LinkedIn pages and sometimes would be searching uh, for images of her around the same time that he was looking up violent pornography. And it went far beyond cyberspace. Of course, we found, uh, you know, her underwear in his apartment. But even more damning, something Lauren had no idea was going on. Cops say McDaniel had free access to her apartment for some time and had been stalking her every move. The linchpin in all this was when we found deleted video that he had used to surveil her home on the night it appears that she was murdered. And that was found on a camera in his possession. That was the straw that broke the camel's back. He took a wooden pole and he duct taped that camera to the end of the pole and then he held the pole up really high to peek inside her window. On the day Lauren's remains were found, McDaniel was arrested on unrelated burglary charges. Cops pounce, interrogating him for answers. Like a zombie in a trance, his monotone voice mostly kept saying, I don't know. You're gonna look at this right here, this little girl right here, and you're gonna say you don't know? I know you know. Tell me, bud. I didn't do it. Yes, you did, Steven. Your head's with the body, quit lying. We want you to, to tell it so that way people are understand you're not a monster. Things just, you got out of control. It's a sickness. You hurt this girl. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. You hurt that girl. Within a few weeks, McDaniels was charged with Lauren's murder. Years passed, but the evidence mounted against him. McDaniel eventually accepted a deal, pleading guilty to murder and openly confessing to the lurid details in court, saying he entered Lauren's apartment at 4.30 in the morning wearing a mask. He explained, quote, she saw me and said very calmly, get the expletive out. I leaped across the bed onto her and grabbed her around the throat. He pleaded to break it into Lauren's apartment, to strangling her to moving her to the bathroom, to taking her body apart, to hiding it, to ripping up evidence and putting it down the toilet, cleaning up everything, and then acting like she was still alive. McDaniel said that during the struggle, Lauren pulled the mask from his face and pleaded, Stephen, please stop. When Lauren was dead, McDaniel dragged her into the bath and left her. He returned that night and dismembered her using a hacksaw blade. The cover of the blade with Lauren's DNA was later found in his apartment. He told us that the rest of her remains were placed in a different dumpster. Tragically, they have never been recovered. And you want to know where the rest of her body is, am I right? Yeah, I think for my parents, it's super important for them. I mean, you have this baby, you raise this baby, and then someone does something like that, and then you don't even get her full body back to be able to bury it. I think that's, you know, extremely hard on them. It's an excruciating pain that can never be relieved. For now, the only solace for Lauren's family, McDaniel was sent to prison for life. <laughs>